Corcovado Park is on the Osa Peninsula on the southern edge of Costa Rica, a home for wild cats and crocodiles. Once the domain of gold miners, poachers and loggers, the park is now a haven for backpackers and jet setters looking for eco-adventure. Alvaro Ugalde is a pioneer of Costa Rica's national park system and a crusader for sustainable development. Osa is home of 50% of the biodiversity of this country. This country is 5% of the biodiversity of the planet. So we're talking about a biodiversity of global importance. It's not just Osa importance, it's not just Costa Rica, it's not even just Mesoamerica. It is global importance. The struggle to win over loggers and miners here to the side of nature conservation has been difficult and dangerous. When Ugalde first came to the Osa, its economy depended largely on gold mining, alcohol sales, and prostitution. The idea of a national park and conservation was met with unfavorable, even violent reaction. It has taken some time, but Ugalde's efforts have paid off. Hector Gonzalez runs a private group working to preserve the rainforest in partnership with the government and local communities. You know, ecotourism has managed to prove, to make clear to people that, you know, forests can be used in a different way and uh, provide some benefits, either for foreign owners or local owners, either by owning the land and the forest and getting incentives and people, or by finding a job. You know, jobs are <laughs> a rarity around here. And that alone has influenced attitudes about ecotourism and about conservation. Changing behavior is crucial to the success of sustainable tourism. The local community needs to be encouraged and influenced in a positive way. Liz Jones built Bosque del Rio Tigre Lodge 15 years ago. Probably one of the most productive things we do is we just try to set an example and plant seeds in the community. When I first came here, a lot of the people in this community would put, throw the trash out the back door we basically just sit there to the rainy seas and wash down the river, end up in the ocean. It takes a while to understand maybe the negative environmental impact, but the economic impact is real quick. <laughs> but I pointed this out to him. Suddenly, there's no more trash in the backyard, and I've noticed in recent years it's almost become socially unacceptable to throw your trash out in the backyard. The Osa Peninsula is a good example of how ecotourism can succeed when everyone gets involved and works toward the same goal. But what happens when success leads to excess? The people in Osa know that enough is enough in terms of development. That's a big challenge. I don't know. Uh, nobody knows. But I think if we continue improving or working together as coalitions, communities, groups, government, I think we should be able to arrive at a decent, uh, decent state of affairs which is sustainable there. That's, that's, that's my hope. That's my dream.
Embedda Indian Village Tour. Our journey will begin at El Kodotu on the shores of the Madden Lake, which is the main reservoir of drinking water for the cities of Panama and Cologne, as well as a supplier of 40% of the water required for the operation of the Panama Canal. The boat journey takes us through the rainforest of the 320,000-acre Chagres National Park, which is the largest of the national parks protecting the Panama Canal watershed. Once at the Indian community, we'll learn about the Imbeda customs and their relationship with nature. We will enjoy a traditional lunch of fish with fried plantains that is freshly prepared by the Indians. There will be handcrafts available for sale. And we'll have a chance to be painted with the traditional hawa, a natural dye the Indians use to adorn their bodies. We'll also visit the nearby waterfall where we can take a dip in the crystal clear waters of the Chagres River. Mm -hmm. 